Hello everyone. Before I begin my speech, I would like to ask everyone in this room. Do you know anyone who is a, a refugee or an asylum seeker? Please raise your hands up. Could be anyone, your friends, family, co-workers, people from school, anyone. Great, I want you to keep these people in your head throughout the duration of the speech. To give a bit of a background information about myself, hello, my name is Anika. I was born and raised in Ukraine. Ethnically, I am Indian and Ukrainian. As far as I remember, I've always wanted to be a doctor. I studied hard in school, took extra curriculums that would make my college application more attractive, and had a stable pathway into university. I knew that after taking the external exams, I would apply for university, and depending on my grade, I would either get a stipend from the government or have my parents pay tuition. I was like every other child in my country. My whole world changed when the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine started on the 24th February in 2022. My family had to move and we've been in Australia since. For two years now, I've been navigating um, an educational system that, is, that differs severely from the one I'm used to back at home. Right now, I'm at the stage when I'm about to graduate high school and I've noticed a bit of a mindset gap between me and my peers. While everyone is worked up about assignments, exams, and what their formal dress will look like, the only thing on my mind is what will happen to me. The visa I have right now that grants me and my family humanitarian protection is temporary. Soon, the government will make a decision that will impact my whole life trajectory. They will order me to either stay in Australia or go back home. And in my case, going back home implies going back to a country that's being destroyed by a genocide as we speak. And as much as I want to say, Australia has granted me a lot of opportunities for both academic and personal development, I cannot say that pursuing the next step in my career, getting a higher education, will be easy. We all know that universities are expensive, maybe not as expensive as, say, the US or the UK, but it is still cost-heavy nonetheless. Domestic students can take out a Commonwealth-supported place and end up paying roughly $14,000 for tuition fees. I think the first question that comes to my mind after me saying this, why don't you take out a loan? And it's a fair question because it's not that I don't want to, I just can't. A paragraph directly from the Australian government website states that temporary visa holders are classified as international students. International students cannot get a CSP or a HELP loan and must pay the international students fees set by the higher education provider which means that I'll need to pay the international fees, which are, as we all know, several times higher than domestic, standing at around 20,000 to 45,000 for an undergraduate degree alone, without an ability to cover some of the costs with the Commonwealth supported place. So then, why not apply for scholarships? Scholarships significantly ease the financial hardships of paying for university. However, this option is extremely limited for refugees like myself and asylum seekers. There are only a handful of scholarships available to us and they're obviously only able to support a limited amount of numbers, so statistically speaking, it is hard to get. It leaves me with one option, paying international tuition fees fully. Both my parents work hard, my mother over there has two jobs, however, they are unable to fund such a big investment out of both their paycheck for four years. So what I'm seeing right now is a dead end nobody can help me get out of. And I'm not alone in this situation. Remember the people you raised your hands for in the beginning and multiplied by a thousand. Young people just like me, 16 or 17, writing the final assessments, figuring out what they want to do in life, knowing that everything can be taken away from them with one singular vote in the parliament. And most of these people have siblings, even more people concerned about their future. There are ways to combat this problem. For example, proposing new pathways for people without permanent residency who are on a temporary humanitarian visa or otherwise a refugee or an asylum seeker. Things like scholarships, bursaries, even minimum financial aid helps immensely in the long run for people who cannot afford the full cost of universities. Think of all the kids that grow up uncertain in where and how they will get around in life without any support from anyone. Think and act now so we can see a future in Australia and be certain in what will happen to us after we leave high school. Thank you.